This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Ok, in the upcoming video you will see my another designed water bump, but this outperforms every single bump that I have ever pulled in this channel. The difference between this water bump that you are about to see and the other 3D printed water bumps is the impeller. 99% of the DIY water bumps have semi closed impeller, but this one will have closed impeller. Also the water bump housing has volute discharge channel, or however to say it. The gap between the impeller and housing will expand basically. And the measurements for, I don't know, housing, impeller, blades, twist angles and so on was actually calculated. You don't see this really often in my channel. Anyway, this pump will work and it works really, really well. So if you want to build this by yourself, then the model is completely free for you to download. But for now, let's get started. For this project, I 3D printed everything with the best and newest Tender 3. This is Creality Tender 3 S1 Pro. The impeller I printed with PLA and some support materials are required, but not inside the impeller. That top surface that closes the impeller will be breached on the 8 impeller plates. That's why there is no need for support materials inside the impeller. But in this case your printer needs pretty good print cooling, otherwise the breaching might fail. Ender 3 S1 Pro has excellent print cooling and that's why this model turned out so well. The other side of the impeller is extrusion with 4 holes. This is for ringed flare coupling. Rigid flange coupling. I will attach this to the impeller with 4mm bolts and then I connected the shaft. So no square nuts this time. By the way I have no idea why I haven't used those before. It's absolute game changer. So the impeller is ready to roll but we also need rest of the water bump. I fired up my ender tree again and started printing. For bump housing I use also PLA. With this model here is one thing that might look a bit weird at the moment. This housing is insanely thick. I needed extra space for rigid flange coupling, bearing, simmering, aka shaft steel. But now another question in there. Why I don't have this little extrusion only in the middle? Well I have one model like that also, but it turned out having support materials over there instead of actual part of the model, it increased the print time and also the material. Plus you have to remove supports and so on. That's why this pump housing is fat as it is. By the way I printed this model with 10% infill. But at this moment I completely forgot that Cura has now smart infill feature. It called differently but for me it's smart infill. Basically it works like 3 supports but inside the model. And this pump housing is absolutely the model where this type of feature helps to save time and material. But yeah when I was slicing this model I completely forgot it. Anyway for this pump housing I added hose nozzle, bearing and shaft seal. The bearing goes into the inner hole and seal to the back side. By the way originally I designed this exactly opposite way. I plan to add the seal inside the bump and then the bearing will not be exposed to the water. But I changed this because I was worried that maybe this rigid flange coupling will damage the seal when they touch each other at high RPM. I'm not sure that this will be the case, but better be safe than sorry. The biggest downside with this little swap is the fact that the bearing will be exposed to the water and it will get rusty. Sad. If those three things are nicely in place, we can add the impeller. Just push this shaft through the bearing and shaft seal. And it's ready. Well actually the lead is missing. I printed this again with my Ender 3 S1 Pro and for material I use PLA. Also some support materials are required. By the way my printing direction looks a bit weird because like this I have to use way more support material. Well I flipped the model. Then yeah I would save material and time. But always supported surfaces of the model looks like shit. It's not perfect. My clearances for this pump are already really tight and I just cannot have any errors because of the supports. But the outer side of the lead, well this doesn't matter at all, looks a bit uglier. When I finally got all the supports off, I can screw this lead to the rest of the water bump with M4 bolts. Right now everything seems to work just fine. The only questionable area is over here. It might leak. Well no shit it will leak, there is literally a gap between housing and lead. So I did this. I had no time to wait, I had to see will this water bump works. And yeah, it did. It seems to work damn well. So it's time to do some serious testing. But before, big thanks for today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is all in one platform to create a beautiful website with minimum effort. It doesn't matter are you a professional website builder or if you don't have any clue how to create a website, because it's so simple. Everybody can use this. Building a website with Squarespace isn't some heavy scripting. You basically add things, remove things, rename stuff and move things around. Squarespace have a lot of powerful features and tools. For example, now you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights. All on one easy to use platform. 
Also, you can create an online store. It doesn't matter do you want to sell digital or physical things. Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Or present your work using Squarespace professional portfolio designs. Display project in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share private work with your clients. Head to squarespace.com slash let's sprint to save 10% off from your first purchase of a website or domain using code let's sprint. But now let's continue with the water pump. First, I went outside and started testing this pump with my power drill. Obviously, it's working and the performance is not too bad. But this is absolutely nothing what you're going to see in just a little bit. Right now, this impeller is turning around 2000 RPMs. To make it look cooler, I increased the flow by adding a hose nozzle with a bit smaller diameter. Still pretty boring. So now I 3D printed some mounts and I will power this pump with my 4 motor gearbox. First of all, this has more power. And this time this impeller should turn around 6000 RPMs. The power I will take from car battery, like always. So let's give it a try. Well, the performance is night and day. I actually had problems to record this water flow because this water flew so fucking oh, bottom, so high up. So I tried to measure the time how fast this pump will fill up this 10 liter water bucket to get some numbers how much water this pump actually moves. Well, I completely failed with this. First of all, because of this. I should see this coming. This had an easy fix. I just took some random heavy thing that I find in my yard. I have no idea why I have this horse thing laying around, but it worked. I mean the tube stayed in bucket, but not the test. Anyway, who cares about the bucket? So I ran a couple of tests more and then I didn't want to do this anymore because I was scared of it. I had to hold this wood plate in the water and I felt this power with my hands. So yeah. If you are going to build this pump by yourself, then be careful, for real. Like I mentioned before, this model is free to download and also the 4 motor gearbox. Actually, all my models are free to download. Also, big thanks for today's video sponsor Squarespace. And if you don't have 3D printer but you wanna build the really first one, then you cannot go wrong with Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. Highly recommend this printer. But big thanks for watching this video if you are still here and see you guys really soon. Bye.